Hey, joyful people. Hi, how are you? My name is Lisa and I am here to make wedding planning joyful for you. Um, yes, so recently I was having a conversation about what planners do, what their roles are, and I realized people were asking at what point should we book a planner? Nice question. <laughs> so let's say this video is you're now engaged. So what next? What next? I would say uh, this is a very fast thing you need to do once you get engaged or once you and your partner decide to get married. Very fast thing you need to do is take a deep breath. Yes, take a deep breath. You need to suck it all in. Um, enjoy that moment, that um, time alone of being engaged, of starting your wedding planning process. You just need to take off that time and enjoy. Enjoy your engagement. Enjoy... Um, the excitement your family and friends have about you getting married before they start bombarding you with questions of when, how, where. Just enjoy. Just take off that time and enjoy it. Um, because once you start, you know, the planning, once you start planning for your big day, it is going to feel like a whirlwind. It's going to feel quite intense. So before you start, look at this as prepping your mind, as both of you um, choosing to, to be in sync before the planning starts. So yeah, my very first thing would be enjoy. Take it all in. Enjoy your engagement. Um, hmm. The next thing I would say is have a conversation with your partner. So now you just got engaged. Both of you need to sit down and have a conversation. What is it you want for your wedding? What are you thinking about? Uh, how much are you willing to spend for the wedding? Who is going to pay for the wedding? Um, what style are you going for for the wedding? When do you want to get married? Uh, so those are conversations that you need to have with your partner before you bring other voices in, before you meet with the, par the parents about the wedding, before you meet with the committee, before you meet with vendors. First sit down and agree, like be on one page. What is it you want for your wedding? Yeah. Um, hmm. After sitting with your partner, obviously you will have a conversation of um, which direction you want to go. So once you do that, the biggest thing you need to also think on is a budget. Yes. Budgets, budgets, budgets. They can be quite uh, intense, cheeky to navigate, but very important that you need to... Um, to, to speak about it. Enter all uh, conversations about the budget with uh, a, a realistic and open mind. What is it that you want to pay for? What is it that you are thinking of splurging on? <laughs> Sit down, uh, create a list. Hmm? I always tell my couples, create a list. What are your needs and what are your wants? What are those things that you know absolutely you need to splurge on you want to spend on because it means something to you and then look at the other side what are those things in case you get a bit excited or um you, you get a bit more money than you anticipated what are those small things you want to add in there so have a conversation about budget have that conversation even before talking to vendors even before um setting a debt yeah have a conversation about the budget and after having a conversation about the budget the next thing you need to do is your guest list your guest list um 
you need to sit down, figure out who do you want to invite for your wedding because the guest list impacts the budget in every sense of the word. You know, the more guests you have, that's more food, more drinks, more uh, tables, more chairs, more. <laughs> it impacts everything for the wedding. So you need to have a guest list. Sit down, um, write down who you want to invite. It's at this point where you have a conversation also with your parents because, you know, weddings are for family. Have a conversation with your parents. Find out who they want to invite. Um, find out who, who you know has to be at the wedding and then write them all down. You'd rather write everyone down and then some, you know, RSVP that they're not coming uh, then write few and then pay for things and then realize, oh my goodness, I forgot so and so. So have a guest list. Um, in our culture, it's usually the groom's side that pays for the white wedding. So you need to find out from the family how many are we allowed to bring over or you know how many should we plan for. So write them all down. After having a guest list, get a date. <laughs> you want to get a date before uh, approaching any vendors because ideally they're going to ask you, okay, what's the date of your wedding? Because they need to check availability. So get a date. Um, are you looking at, oh my God, this is a date that when we first started maybe you know, cutting? Is this a date that uh, reminds me of, I don't know, something, a holiday? Is this my birthday? Is this, just sit down together and find out what date works. Some people choose dates in line with when family and friends will, you know, be coming into the country or coming into town and try to Find out, okay, what date is convenient for everyone? What date is convenient for both of you? So, yeah, get a date. And the moment you get a date, this is the step we're talking about. Hire a planner. Yes, don't, uh, don't have all these ideas without a date and then, you know, come to the planner because still they will want to know what's the date of your wedding. So once you hire your planner, that's when you can um, fill them in on what's been happening on the guest list that you were thinking, on the budget that you were thinking, on um, the style you were thinking, all these things. And then they can advise if what you know had in mind is actually realistic or needs to be revised. So hire a planner, let them take all that and help you piece them together. It's like a ramshackle puzzle that needs to be pieced beautifully. So it's at that point where you hire the planner. Um, so once you hire your planner, then the next thing you need to do is choose your venue. Yeah. Uh, it is important to go to your venue after you have a date. That way, um, you check if they're available. It's better than going to a venue, you like a venue, and then they ask you what the date is and you don't know. So your planner can advise and say, okay, with your guest list, with your budget, I think these venues would be perfect for you. And by venue, I don't mean only the reception. Where are you having your ceremony? It needs to make sense in terms of logistics. How far is it? How much time do we need to put in travel time? Um, where would you be dressing up from? All those things come into play. Um, most people have, you know, church. Others have the mosque. What is it? Where is um, your ceremony? What is that that you'd like to... To, to achieve for your day. So where is the ceremony going to be and where is the reception going to be? You don't want to make them so far apart that you spend now most of your day, your wedding day in travel time. So it has to make sense um, in that you don't get tired very easily or your timeline is not impacted so much. 
So yes, you need to choose where you're having your ceremony and where are you having your reception. And then once you pick out your venue, the next big thing you need to do is choose your vendors. Yeah, choose your vendors. Um, your planner should be able to um, marry you properly with vendors who align with your vision, align with your style, align with your budget. So there they can advise and say, okay, this is where this is where you need to spend on, this is what you need to, you know, look for. So in there can be a lot. It can be a lot. Trying to choose a vendor um, is is a it's an exercise. So you need to choose vendors that are for you. So once you come down to the last part of choosing your vendors, that's when everything now starts to, to be mapped out. That's where the map is now coming together. Uh, you already, at that point, you already have your debt. At that point, you already have your guest list. At that point, you already have your venue. At that point, you already have a planner to help you coordinate and bring together everything. So yeah, I hope this is... <laughs> a bit of a guideline on what to expect after getting engaged and what you need to look out for step by step look at this as um look at this as just a, a road map it shouldn't be maybe a blueprint because everyone is is different but look at it as a road map on how you need to navigate your planning process after getting engaged and yeah, happy wedding planning. I am so excited for you. Congratulations to all the couples that just got engaged and would and are starting their planning process or couples who are yet to get engaged and they just want to know what to expect once they take that journey. So please uh, comment. Let us know in the comments what you decided to start with. Please um, subscribe to our channel. Let's engage and talk and learn more from each other how to choose joy during our planning. Bye.